Hello, divine creations, divine marvels, children of God. Hi, forever. Hi, Nicola. Thanks for saying hello. Welcome to anyone else watching this video. To any newcomers, very warm welcome. If you'd like more information on this topic, I'm going to post a link right now. And a very warm welcome to any return visitors. So, let's come into the present moment. Let's come right here, right now. I've been up for about six hours. I've, a lot's happened today. Is it, did I get up? At, yeah, for six hours. <laughs> and I've got six more hours ahead of me in the day. But those aren't here right now. Uh, I, and I, let me know if I'm the only one out there, but I'm breaking the habit of dwelling on the past and dwelling on the future. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with contemplating and reflecting things that have happened, reflecting on our plans, our goals, our wishes. However, I am recovering from the habit, it's kind of an addiction really, <laughs> of not being in the present moment, of being not here. Um, and that, that kind of dwelling, uh, uh, kind of dwelling as opposed to reflecting or contemplating, and it kind of happens uh, automatically. And Bruno Gruning spoke of this, he spoke of the force of habit. And so, and it, it really boils down to thoughts. A lot of it, what kind of thoughts are we saying yes to? So let's just take a breath. Come into the now. And here's a quote about Bruno Gruning, uh, not about, from Bruno Gruning. <laughs> He said, the divine power builds up, but the evil, devilish power tears down. He said, I want the bad to be eliminated and the good to unfold. He said, the good in people must drive out the bad. So, ultimately, we need to learn. Uh, I'm convinced that Bruno taught us and called us to apply this to every thought. Now that's an intimidating, you know, uh, it can sound intimidating to check each thought, but ultimately that's what we need to do. And so we just start one, th I've started one thought at a time. And with practice, it comes easier and easier and easier to check each thought. Does this thought build me up or does it tear down? Now, let's say I'm sitting here dwelling on, on um, like I have a big decision. I'm in the process of buying a car. There's a lot of factors. And I was attending to it a little bit before this. So if I'm thinking about that right now, and not thinking, but just kind of having thoughts, it's one thing to sit and reflect on, hmm, that car or that car. But when I observe myself, I notice a lot of the thoughts are just kind of automatic. Like, what about this? And I need to call this person. And like, it's not really me thinking. It's just like these thoughts bombarding me. Such thoughts actually tear me down. Not in a big way, but they're, they're, um, they're ever so slightly stressful. So what I'm learning to do is thought by thought, check in. Is this a good thought? Is this a, a negative thought? Does this thought draw me closer to God, life? Or does this thought <clears throat> deplete me, disconnect me from God? So let's spend a little time taking in this good energy, observing our thoughts, noticing which ones and first of all, just observe yourself and see if you have a similar experience that, that some thoughts, it's not even like we're really thinking them. They just show up and they have our attention, but we're not really paying attention, but they're there. It's kind of like this automatic process. 
That's my experience. Spend a little time, observe yourself, and notice what you notice. Taking in the energy that builds up, the divine energy that builds up, that heals, that helps, that energizes. So I don't know about all of you, but I had no thoughts during that quiet period. <laughs> I only had about 50. <laughs> I'm getting better. That's improvement. <laughs> so mm, so um, I read parts from a speech of uh, Bruno Gruning's, uh, God sent us a son, his son. And in it, Bruno had some very interesting things to say. I mean, Bruno always has interesting things to say. Um, there's one particular part that I wanna, wanna re reflect on a little bit. Here's what uh, Bruno says about Christmas and about God uh, sending Christ. He 
Yes, dear friends, and yet I have to keep on saying, let us do everything that has been given us here on our journey in life from God through Christ, our Savior. And I said just now that you have the pleasure of anticipating that you can give gifts to those closest to you, of expecting gifts yourself, earthly gifts, that is. But all that, my dear friends, is just nothing for us. We can also continue like this, but then you have forgotten the most important thing. And the most important thing is that God, our Father, also wants to give us a gift. For he once gave us so rich a gift. And I must say, he sent us a son, his son, and he worked through him. And through Christ, he showed us the way. He has given more, certainly, than just an earthly gift. This is a personal gift. Naturally, God expects from us not just anything, but just this, that we also take this, our, this, excuse me, but, but just this, that we also take this, his gift, into ourselves. Don't reflect on that for a little bit. So here Bruno points out that God sending us Christ is a gift more precious than any earthly gift. And that God wants us to take this, his gift, into ourselves. And Bruno also said uh, that people don't really understand Christ. And here's, here's what Bruno had to say on this. They took it only like this. And that was that once upon a time, Christ was here once, and they don't believe that he is always with us. And they also don't believe that he can dwell in us, that we can actually be guided by him. That is, that God, through his Son, leads us to where we belong, to whom we belong. I know that people brush all this aside with a certain carelessness. Briefly put, they simply cannot have faith any more. So I'm going to post the link for that. And I read uh, paragraph 16 and 27. So those are very profound words. And, um, you know, you hear I've heard those words so many times from Christians, but the, the way in which Bruno shares it, it the, the energy is very different. Sort of, I've been sort of threatened with such ideas. Like you have to accept, you have to accept Jesus into you and you have to be guided, you know, and, and if not, horrible things are going to happen. Like it's not, um, it's very much a turnoff, and I, I know I'm not the only one. But here Bruno, in essence, just says kind of, hey, this is what works. <laughs> and that Christ is actually a gift. God wants us to accept that gift, to take it in.
And so that can happen for different, for, it's a very personal thing, what that looks like, how that shows up for each person. I know for myself uh, that my deepest moment of feeling Christ uh, enter me was, was really one of the darkest moments of my life. And uh, I didn't know what to do. I found myself in a, in a mental, emotional, even a spiritual state that um, I was in a, I found myself in a corner. And I, it was so funny. These words just came to me. They're, they're not how I normally think or speak, but these words came to me. I said, okay, Jesus, well, my Christian friends say you're the ultimate and that you can just, that you're the ultimate teacher, that you can just take care of everything. Well, okay, I need you to come inside me and, and to uh, give me the strength to fight, to live, to continue on, because I can't, and I need you to fight also with me. Those were about my exact words. I don't remember the exact words. And I felt something come inside me. And I felt something awaken in me. And uh, it hasn't been the end of all my problems, uh, but it was the beginning of, it's hard to put into words, uh, somehow a corner just got turned in that moment for me. I, on the one hand, I became a different person. On another hand, like a, a radical process was begun of becoming a different person. And that was my experience. And you talk to different people, of different denominations, or, and they'll describe their own encounter with Jesus. So it's fascinating to me. Um, you know, Bruno Gruning describes himself as our friend and helper, and yet he describes Christ as humanity's greatest friend and the supreme spiritual healer. So I sometimes get confused. Well, do I ask Bruno for help? Do I ask Jesus for help? And um, I don't claim to have the answer to that question. I can just tell you what I do. <laughs> But more importantly, there's some words of Bruno's that come to mind. Um, he said, I am helping you. And I'm para I'm, this is almost an exact quote. I am helping you. And my help leads to your salvation, leads you back onto the path to, path to which you belong, the path of Christ. So those are deep words. Uh, let's reflect on those. And I, I'm sorry, I thought I had my phone off. <laughs> Um, and I'll, I'll say them again. I am helping. This is what Bruno said. I am helping you, and my help leads to your salvation. It leads you back to the path upon which you belong, the path of Christ. And he ultimately said that everyone must walk the path of Christ. So let's reflect on this. I don't feel like it's... All I have is an interpretation of those sentences. <laughs> and the world has enough interpretations. So instead, let's each really reflect on it and come to our own understanding of what Bruno meant by those words.
So I really, um, I hope people will take, take some time and reflect on this and um, draw their own, their own conclusions and hopefully have their own experience. Mm. So today is December 22nd, 2020. <clears throat> um, and just a brief announcement. So today's meeting at noon is actually going to be on Zoom. You can go to the uh, event and you'll see a link below. And... Um, Words were very hard for me to accept because I'd been raised in a very conservative, uh, very conservative Christian church, you know, and and so Bruno uses a lot of the same language <clears throat> that you'll hear in even a conservative Christian church, but there's and he's passionate about it, but it's a different kind of passion, right? Like the I the way church I was raised in, it was like, you do this or you're basically you're going to hell. You believe this, you do this. There, there wasn't really passion. There was more like fury, you know. So, so Bruno's. There are some of the details are different, obviously. And I've heard it said by who I consider a reliable source, uh, Dieter Hausler, the current head of the Bruno Gurning Circle of Friends, uh, the largest Bruno Gurning organization in the world. He said that Bruno said, I don't like to go secondhand, but here we go. He said that Bruno said that Jesus was the son of God and that God has more than one son. So I haven't read that yet, but I, I trust that... Uh, I trust that, the, that those may not be Bruno's exact words, but that Bruno in essence said that. So that, for me, the spiritual path is about finding the, finding the truth and finding, and that the truth is what works. The truth isn't a dogma or an idea, it's what works. And um, that entails soul searching, but it also entails um, having an experience. It entails finding out in your own experience. So let's sit in silence and continue to absorb this good energy. We can ask for anyone or any situation. I don't, uh, I don't 
We can give away any negative thoughts, especially thoughts about burdens or illnesses. And let's really set an intention to, you know, one of the interesting things about this channel is there's people here of all beliefs and no belief, right? There's some, I've had people come here who are really pretty devout Christians. And I've had people who come here who are absolutely not. And, um, and so whatever your belief or understanding about Christ, let's just ask that we open to the goodness that Christ is and that Christ sends, especially during this special season. Bruno Gruning said that Christmas Eve was a night of great grace. So let's really ask that we're able to receive that. So much for joining in, everyone. Thanks for saying hi, Magdalena. I wish everyone a beautiful day. And again, uh, if anyone feels inspired to, please join in on the Zoom meditation today. Thank you so much. Take care. <laughs>